friends, and welcome back to Life's a Beecham. I'm Amber, and today we're gonna make applesauce. But before we dive into that, we did have some family visiting the Northwest, so we spent the day in Whidbey Island. I thought you might enjoy a little peek into that. Spring is trying really hard to make its way here, so we had a break in the rain for the day, which was so great because it was such a perfect day with the sun shining and then being able to visit with our family and our friends. It was just absolutely wonderful. In the Pacific Northwest, we are known for rain, and that is true. It definitely does rain a good bit around here, but man, sunny days are just so breathtaking. So if you've not been here, I would definitely suggest a visit, especially if you're into outdoor activities. We don't get too extreme of weather here, so usually there's something to do all year round, especially if you don't mind getting a little bit of sogginess or wetness while you go. I am looking forward though to all of the hiking and the camping that we have coming up here throughout the spring and the summer. The drive from where we live, the drive to and from Whidbey Island was long, but it is so lush and so beautiful. And you can take the ferry or drive Deception Pass, which is what we did here. And it is just absolutely stunning, which you can see how pretty it is, but in real life, it's absolutely ridiculous. 10 out of 10 would highly recommend. So it's applesauce making day and first things first, I need to clean up the kitchen. I try to get it all cleaned up and put away before I go to bed so that way in the morning I can just unload the dishwasher and be ready for the day. Um, I actually have been thinking about putting together a video talking about my house cleaning routine that I created. I'm not really naturally the most efficient when it comes to housekeeping, but I really do value order. So it can be a bit of a conflict internally for me. Uh, I took the time and researched some different schedules and methods to keep it all in order, but nothing really seemed to fit right for me. So I took what I learned and then I created something that suits me better and it really has transformed my life. So I'd be happy to share it with you all. And maybe you can find some inspiration and motivation in that. So you let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. So like I said earlier, I do like to try to get the dishes run before I go to bed so that way I can just unload them and have an empty dish dishwasher ready for me for the day. Um, but if I'm being honest, I really don't hit that all the time. I usually go through long streaks where I'm doing really well at that and then I find myself totally fumbling a bit to get back on my routine. So since I've been off my routine, obviously, um, I instead am having to clean my kitchen first and get it ready for this prep day for the applesauce, which for me, there's just nothing worse than trying to do a big prep day in a messy kitchen. I like to soak my apples in a water, vinegar, and baking soda bath first, and I let them soak for a few minutes before I rinse them off and then let them dry. I do try to make a big batch of applesauce every so often so that way we have some on hand and I will usually end up either freezing it or canning it depending on how much I made. This time around, I didn't make quite enough to can, so I was able to just put it in a couple of containers and freeze it up. But I do it for a couple of reasons as far as making the big batch. Firstly, it just tastes so much better than store-bought. The flavor is really simple, but gosh, it is so deep and wonderful. And I feel like I've never had a store-bought that comes even close. And secondly, when you make it from scratch, you get to really determine the ingredients. We seldom have conventional or processed sugar in our home, so I like to make everything without any of the added sweetness. We're mostly car low carb, so you might notice as we go along that my recipes will fit into that category. But though the adults, which is my husband and I, and then my dad also lives with us, we adhere to a low carb uh, lifestyle. We aren't as strict with our daughter. Her diet is much more paleo plus some dairy as well. And on occasion here and there, she'll have some steel cut oats, but I like to use the applesauce as a natural sweetener for things like the oats. But honestly, she mostly just eats it as is. When I'm preparing the apples, I have a couple of different methods that I use. Sometimes I'll just chop up the apples, which includes like the core, the stems, the peels, all of it, and pop them right into the pot to cook. And then once they're cooked, I'll process them through an old school manual food mill. But this time around, I decided to do the hard work up front and peel and core the apples first. I feel like both methods end up with a good bit of monotonous work, but my hands seemed significantly stickier when I peel them first. I do end up using an immersion blender later on to smooth it all out. And I actually really liked this texture, maybe even more so than the food mill. 
And here you'll see I'm using a few different types of apples today. Firstly, I had a handful of Granny Smith and I think some Gala, Gala, Gala apples that were getting a bit soft. They weren't going to be enjoyable to eat fresh at that point. And some of them were a little bit too far gone, but any that weren't, I did add those to the mix, which works great because I actually prefer an applesauce that has a mixture of sweet and sour apples. I basically do a sweet apple, like here I have the majority of these you'll see are Fuji, and then I have a handful of the Granny Smith, and I just think it adds to the flavor later on. The discarded portion of the apples in the bowl here, I do end up being able to save them and take them to a friend's house that has chickens, which on a side note, we are hoping to get chickens at some point, and if we do, we will totally bring you along for the journey. Nonetheless, I thought a big old bowl of delicious apple bits would be something my friend's chicken would like, and they sure did. I don't have a huge stainless steel pot yet, so the one that I have does limit how much I can make in one batch. However, I have also made multiple batches in a day before, but I decided to just stick with this one. I also could have kept chopping, and as the apples began to cook down, I could have kept adding more, but my hands were super sticky, and honestly, I was just over peeling the apples. And then any apples that I didn't process, I kept them to eat fresh. And if the fresh apples don't get eaten quickly enough, they'll end up being applesauce sooner than later anyhow. Once I prep the pot of apples, I get them on the stove on medium to medium high heat. And I add about a cup of water just so that the apples don't burn on the bottom before they start to break down and release their own juices. We like to keep our applesauce pretty simple, so I add a good bit of cinnamon, a little bit of ground cloves, and then a solid pinch of salt, and that's literally it. I will say, I think my favorite part of making applesauce is the smell. My home, seriously, smells like heaven. Then I just let the apples cook down with the lid on it, and I stir them every few minutes to make sure they don't stick to the bottom or burn. If you get a little bit of burn flavor in there, it ruins the whole batch. And then when I do stir, I also quickly check to see the apple's consistency and see if they're cooked down enough to make a nice and smooth puree. And then once they are, I turn off the heat and then I'm gonna hit it with the immersion blender. If you like a chunkier applesauce, you can just not blend the whole way or you could even use one of those hand potato mashers to get it how you like it. It's really all about your preference here. We like ours nice and smooth, so I just blend it until it's the consistency we like. My mom was from Canada, so I don't know if this is how everyone eats their applesauce or if this is something she brought down with her, but she always added a little bit of cream to it when she served it. And my daughter absolutely loves it this way. I'm honestly not even sure that she would eat it without it at this point. It's sort of like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together, especially when it's nice and piping hot and fresh. That cold cream on top, it's so good. And it's just like an apple pie a la mode. If you haven't tried it, you definitely should give it a whirl. It was pretty hot here while she was trying it, so she was taking little bitty bites, but she really did love it and had a second helping once we were done with this. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and head on over to Instagram and follow me at Life's a Beecham. 